Hey guys, welcome to that 135th scale show. Uh, I just wanted to, before I get into uh, painting the detail painting on, on the guy we've been working on, I just wanted to kind of show the differences. Um, <clears throat> so I've been working on this guy. Uh, he was the one that I was supposed to uh, uh, paint for these Learn Together series, and I took him back and stripped him because I, I messed the first video up in skip steps, right? And um, I've actually done a, a, a pretty decent job. It's almost, it's a drastic difference. And this is from uh, a lot of practice and it's from, you know, doing these Learn Together videos. So I'm um, just gonna keep doing them and uh, hopefully we'll all become uh, better figure painters. Um, I'm really proud of this guy. Uh, so there's some differences and they're kind of subtle. I've painted them both with English uniform, but uh, this guy has more green. This guy has more green. On them, uh, this guy has more of an ochre look and a little bit more of a faded look, and that's a good thing because we don't want them to look the same. Even though they're part of the same unit, they might be a part of the same vehicle. He might have been sticking out the turret a little bit longer than this guy, you know, um, or maybe he put on a brand new shirt and maybe he's wearing this old jacket. Um, so when you think about that, you know, we all walk different, we all wear clothes differently, and so sun, weather, and all that things will actually weather their clothing different. So keep that in mind when you're painting multiple figures at once. You can always vary your, your base tone. Um, I actually did all his highlights with, with oil paint as well as his face. I didn't do a mixed medium. Then I just went and did all my detail painting with acrylics. And that's what we're going to do today with this guy. Before I do that, I do want to kind of say this is a, a, actually a good time to tell you guys a tip um, to help improve your figure painting. Uh, work on multiple figures at once. And if you, uh, you know, Paint, paint like three or four of them up. Next day, pick the best one. Don't look at them for a day. Next day, pick the best one and strip the other one. So that's typically how I work. Um, I'll work on a model for a little bit. I'll, I'll paint it or build it or whatever, and then I'll, I'll work on some figures for a little bit. Another tip is practice your handwriting. That's a crazy one, right? Uh, but it actually helps your brush control, from what I understand, and I've been doing a little bit. And actually, I, I carry around an old notebook to, to jot down my ideas and things like that for, for videos and films and things. So um, uh, that's uh, for 15 minutes a day. Just practice your penmanship. And that actually helps with your brush control. And, and I actually have a, a natural shake that um, sometimes, you know, when I'm doing stuff, I have to, like, physically put it down on the bench and then get in there, like, you know, like this. And then you'll see me come up. And I'll actually be blocking the camera because, you know, I, I need to see. I need to get up on top of something to see it. Okay, so uh, so actually I'm going to show you guys a couple of references that I used for this guy. And then we're going to uh, do them on this. First is the tank badge. The tank patch is actually um, like a field gray kind of color, like the, the light OD green. And it has like a deck tan tank in the middle of it. And then there's black. Uh, outlining along along the thing so that basically has to become I didn't do such a great job on this one there's a little bit of a shadow so it gives it, a, it gives it that look I think on this one I did a much much better job on getting the three colors to work now the other one is the desert rat patch and this is where if you wanted to add this onto a Tamiya figure you're gonna have to paint it on or if you wanted to add it onto a figure that doesn't have it sculpted on you have to add it yourself but Alpine has go gone ahead and actually sculpted it into the figure and it's, I'm going to be doing it on the on the camera with the other figure, but it's you know I painted the patch black, and you know you look up desert red patch. There's a bunch of different kinds of patches. There's tan ones. There's, I think there's black, yellow, red ones. And uh, but I decided just to go with the classic of black and red. And so um, and you have the, the the black outline there, and then I just literally dry brush in red. Yeah. As you can see here, I've I've, I've worked like. About three different tones of of uh, variants of leather brown and saddle brown to give this worn leather look to his gloves. And so this other guy doesn't have gloves, so I won't be able to show that. But yeah, this is just an idea. I just want to get you, get you guys to get the idea that I'm just taking one or two colors and I'm adding in a lighter color and mixing with water and and thinning it and thinning it and thinning it. So it starts out like a milky consistency and then works its way, you know. Uh, work your way to almost like a water consistency that you can just dry brush on. So, and I did all those buttons. I wanted them to stand out a little bit more, so I actually did those a darker color than what they actually would be in real life, just because I wanted them to stand out. So I used uh, black gray, and that was it. Just dapped in black gray into the buttons, 
and that's how I how I got those darker darker colors. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and start the detail painting on the guy we've been working on. I've already got my colors here on my wet palette from last night. They might have to be worked up just a little bit, but not too much. Yeah, you can see some of my, my greens here. So I'm going to start with his scarf. Now, I want his scarf to be a dark green color, and I don't know. I think this is actually supposed to be field gray here. i got to work that back, some life back into that. We're going to throw in some black to darken that up. Let's mix it with some black. Yes, there we go. So this is going to be the color of his base color of his scarf. And now I'm just going to go through, and once again, I might have to pull him back out of the camera, but I'm going to try to keep him in the camera as much as possible. All I'm doing is just lightly getting the paint in there. This is much nicer with music playing uh, compared to previ the previous videos. It's more natural to how I actually work. <laughs> It's okay if you get some on the collar that we've already painted, because uh, we have some English uniform in there that we can we can touch up with. And I do clean my brush a lot. I just use water and there's a paper towel over here. Actually, I'll show you. And when I actually I don't know if I've showed you guys this. When you pull the brush back, you actually kind of twist it, and you can show it on my hand. As you pull it back and twist, it's going to help save your bristles. 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 All right. So while that paint on this collar is drying, we're going to work this lighter green gray or field gray. Let's check it there. And we have this this tank badge here. Got a little bit too much paint on my brush, and we're just going to dab that onto that patch. And we'll let that dry. And start the other one. I got a fan going in here, so these acrylic paints are drying super fast, right? So one reason the wet palette stick really helping out, or one area it's really helping out, is that uh, it keeps the paints wet even though I have this fan going. And then we might take some of this and just tap it into, there we go, tap it onto the top of his scarf there, and where the light would be hitting under his chin. And now, let's see where else what do we need to look at, what we need to look at here. I'm actually going to have to paint his chevrons, it's something really hard to do, but we'll, we'll figure that out. I have a new color that I'm going to try here. Okay, so I realized in editing that I uh, a, a step got step skipped because of uh, my 20 minute record time. So um, the step that got skipped was actually painting of the rank. You know, you can use bright yellows and things like that, but yellow just doesn't stick. You know, there's something about yellows and reds that are uh, kind of difficult to get them to stick. But um, uh, this is World War II beige, and we're just we want to keep the, the chevron shape and I just discovered this actually while making the video earlier I just pull down lightly a dry brush over top of the rank and you keep your chevron stripes how cool is that and I didn't even think about that but I was actually and this is where it comes in watching airplane guys doing uh, watching airplane guys doing their panel lines sometimes like so you're watching other modelers <laughs> do airplanes that help with this a little bit. There we go. Now our chevrons are, are lighter yellow, a lighter, lighter beige color than what they are. Now, there is, I do need to take some English uniform and outline this because it's kind of fading into it there, right? So I'll do that, but that's just a, a quick interjection uh, in the middle of the video. So now I'm gonna go ahead and paint in the uh, the black. While we're waiting on this other stuff to dry, we're gonna start painting the black and we're gonna hit, we're gonna paint the squares on the shoulders for the Desert Rat Badge. And the cool thing about acrylics too is that if you just tap in just a little bit of a wet brush and actually spread down that color, right? That field gray that we dropped onto the tank badge is actually already dry, so now we're gonna take just a dab of deck tan and we're just gonna basically use a dry brush motion over top of what's already sculpted on there. Okay, now we're gonna let that deck tan dry and we're gonna do the red, now that the black is dry, we're gonna do the red on top of the black. And probably need to stir this up. Nice. See, the red was in a nice watery spot, so it kept overnight. Now this is, I'm gonna actually get my visor, well, I wanna get my visor out, but I don't, because I know it might block, so I'm just gonna leave it off. But yeah, we're just gonna stipple it on to the rat. That's okay. 
good. So I'm just going to repeat the process on the other side. I've painted his uh, by nose before, before I realized the camera had stopped recording and they're kind of difficult but I wanted to make a comparison of um, you know of the to me if like your basic kit to me I figure I've been working on uh, uh, Matilda off of the show and uh, uh, one of the things you know is the to me I figures this is actually a great set of to me I figures that come in the box but I've already built it up before so I don't want to repeat myself and so I you know um, but uh, I'm still going to build them and have them off to the side to practice on. But um, you, you know, they're a little bit more flat. And uh, also, like with the high quality resin figures, you can just basically dry brush everything. All the details and everything are already carved into it for you, or sculpted, rather. Uh, they're sculpted for you, so it makes it a little bit easier. Um, these guys are a little bit more flat, and uh, you have to really paint in all the detail yourself pretty much. But it's just a small comparison. I, I'd recommend uh, that you, you practice with these guys and then for a while and then get yourself a high quality resin figure because you'll actually see and feel the difference. All right, so where I'm at with this guy, I can see my black gray has dried up on me. So I'm gonna pop in all his buttons. We got his rank, his tank badges, his desert rat patch, his scarf, his binoculars and everything else so he's done yeah <laughs> you get one button to paint i thought he had more actually you know what just to for my own oh, here we go on his pistol case and on his first aid pouch we'll just dab in some gray there and also on his belt so he has this uh his web gear belt and i don't want to leave that deck tan like the rest of it so let's just go ahead and Drop that in. And I'm, just, I'm just doing single stroke lines here. And we don't want his binos to be completely black. There's still a couple of things on here. So we can take this black gray and just run it over everything. And that gives it that kind of uh, plastic sheen part of it. And there's one more detail that I forgot about that I just now noticed. Might be time for me to make a new wet palette or get some more water in there. But I only got one more thing to paint, so it's actually kind of—it's actually kind of funny that this song is playing as I'm about to uh, paint his wedding band. So I'm gonna take a little bit of Vallejo gold paint. It's not much. We just need a drop of it. And so you know, once again, tiny stuff like this. It's just stuff you need to, you know, just stipple in. You don't have to like shove your brush in there. You just want to stipple it in. Uh, it's almost like almost like dry brushing, but you're just tapping paint in. And I think, yeah, I'm gonna call this guy done. So that's been this is uh, the last uh, part. I got now I have two uh, two British tankers painted up, and uh, I'm hoping they'll go with my Matilda. I have a third one that I need to paint, and. Uh, He's a little bit different than these guys. He's a little—he's uh, wearing shorts and a sweater. But um, even though these guys look uh, more Northwest uh, Europe, I think I'm just going to go ahead and shove them with my Matilda. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I'm going to do more of these. Uh, we're going to do different things. I have some plans uh, coming up, so uh, with more figure painting involved, and we'll kind of repeat the the processes, but we'll also uh, go through different uniforms and different uh, units and things like that as I as I come across them. So uh, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and, and taking part in it. And I hope that uh, this, this series has, has helped you guys uh, gain some confidence with the figure painting. And until next time, I'll talk to you soon.